when has there not been a case against NATO? We've been told that it's a defensive alliance. Really, it's been responsible for pretty well the disproportionate amount of aggression around the world. We've been told it has increased security, but it finds us, we find ourselves in the middle of one of the most dangerous wars since the end of the Second World War. We have been told it's necessary, but we uh, there are lots of things, including the ignominious withdrawal from Afghanistan, which make us wonder whether it is. The entire history of NATO says otherwise. In 1949, there was a case against NATO because it was in fact the US's instrument to get itself in Europe, keep the Germans down and the Russians out as uh, Lord Ismay is said to have remarked before he became Secretary General of NATO. Uh, in fact, of course, this was just the US muscling in on the Europeans who had, through the treaties of Dunkirk and Brussels, been trying to protect themselves against a potentially resurgent Germany. There was a case against NATO when Germany's entry finally pointed its guns at the Soviet Union and brought the Cold War to Europe, prompting the Soviet Union to create the Warsaw Pact and, uh, and, and, and essentially uh, uh, doing this, even though up until then, the Soviet posture was entirely defensive. There was, a, uh, there was a case against NATO throughout the Cold War when it prompted an arms race and a nuclear arms race with entirely fantastical ideas about Soviet expansionism. There was a case against NATO in the 60s and 70s when detente was deepening economic, political, diplomatic relations across the Cold War divide and when France left its military command. There was a case against NATO above all in 1989 when the West made its promises to Gorbachev to say that NATO would not expand one single inch beyond uh, absorbing East Germany. And uh, in fact, uh, uh, for, a, for a long time, for months, Western sources have been saying, oh, there was no promise or blah, blah, and so on. In fact, we now have documentary proof that such a promise was made. And, and this comes from many different sources. There was a case against NATO. Uh, since then, there has been a case against NATO more or less con continuously as it has been heightening tensions, increasing military expenditures and military actions, um, and also burdening countries such as Greece that can barely afford such expenditures. There was a case against NATO in 2001 when the, for the first time Article 5 was invoked and NATO as an alliance entered Afghanistan only to leave it 20 years later with uh, with uh, with with um, uh, with completely ignominious results uh, leaving it in fact leaving Afghanistan much worse than it had been before there is there has been a case against NATO each time it has expanded eastward endangering European security including by offering membership to Georgia and NATO there was a case against NATO in 2021 when President Biden newly elected began to make it an instrument for his alleged project for uh, uh, uniting alleged democracies when in fact they had been reduced to hollow electoral shells and was and things were the worst perhaps in the United States itself. And since then, President Biden has been trying to make it into an instrument for imposing the U.S.'s own uh, uh, laws uh, which it calls international law, which it calls the rules-based international order, which goes directly against the United Nations Charter and much international law. And finally, in 2022, there is a very strong case against NATO because it has provoked the current war over Ukraine, uh, it, which the majority of the world does not agree with, and which it seems the US now plans to extend to Asia by clearly contemplating a new confrontation with China over time. Taiwan modeled on the one uh, 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 the, uh, modeled on the confrontation with Russia over Ukraine. And this is bound to ruin the security of the world's most economically dynamic region. There has been a case against NATO throughout its history because it has simply the wrong idea about how to promote peace. You cannot promote peace through aggression, but through the promotion of viable economies, equal prosperous economies that work to mutual benefit. I'm Michael Hudson. I'm appearing here for the International Manifesto Group. If you like this video and want to like it, please subscribe. For more information, go to the address on the screen.